want to thank Lynn Miller for his rendition of Green Hills and welcome everyone here today. Uh, I'm Michael Barber. I'm president of the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 25, representing the San Francisco Bay Area. As we begin today's service, I want to acknowledge that we hold this service of remembrance and commemoration on Indigenous land. Following the gold rush of 1949 and California becoming a state in 19, or sorry, 1850, uh, the United States government began the stated process to establish formal relationships with tribal communities. The unstated intent of this process was to extinguish indigenous title to the land and forcibly move people to areas that were less desired by whites. Throughout 1851 and 1852, three commissioners negotiated tribe negotiated with tribes up and down the state, creating the alphabet treaties, treaties A through treaties R. Greenland Memorial Park in Coleman General sits on the unceded land that was once home to the Ohlone tribes of the Miwa Ma and the Rab Ramatush. It was included in session track 274 of Treaty M in 1851, which is designated to limit the indigenous territory to a small parcel of land between Merced and Tulum River. The United States Senate would actually fail to ratify these treaties because if Mexico had not originally recognized the indigenous titles to these lands, then there's no need for the US to even enter into treaties to take the land. As such, we stand on land today that is unceded territory. It is important to understand that both the existence of the treaties and the contents were held secret until 1905 which meant that for over 50 years, the indigenous tribes of California had no right to exist. Additionally, while the US government were negotiating these treaties, the newly formed state of California was passing laws to authorize and pay for the extermination of indigenous people or to provide for their enslavement. Today, as we remember those who bravely answered the call to their country's service, we should also remember and acknowledge the people indigenous to this land, their culture, their language, and their freedom, all of which was stolen from them. To begin the service, I'd like to call upon our uh, Vice President, who is our acting chaplain today, uh, Dennis Edmondson, uh, for the invocation, followed by the posting of the colors. Almighty God, you are our refuge and strength. We humble ourselves in your presence, and remembering the great things you have done for us, we lift up our hearts in adoration and praise. As you have gathered us together this day, we give you thanks for all who served their country in time of trial. In remembrance of those who made the supreme sacrifice, make us better men and women, and give us peace in our time, O oh Lord. Amen. <laughs> I was going to say, you can stand for the national anthem, but everyone is standing. So um, now we'll have the Star Spangled Banner.
in heaven too. Each blossoming May, I think they keep Memorial Day and not in scattered feeble groups, but one great host of marching troops. The soldier lines are shortening here, swiftly, sadly, year by year. But yonder in the skies of spring, the glorious lines are lengthening. Still waves old glory even there, and heaven itself is not more fair. Still rises in that peaceful land the music of the martial band. No wounds, no weariness, they know. The springing youth of long ago, their speeding miles as stoutly run as in the days of 61. And how the shining columns cheer as mighty generals appear, heroes of fortune's high degree, Grant, Sherman, Sheridan, and Lee. Ah, yes, and Lee. For on those plains, no thought of ancient strife remains, but brotherly they march away, the comrade blue beside the gray. And thus, as each recurring year, the soldier lines grow shorter here, our saddened thoughts will gladly rise to that review beyond the skies. memories remembering what the cannons roar the hissing of the shot the weary hospital the prison pen the widow's tears the, uh, the groans of the stalwart men the bitterness of fratricidal strife the pangs of death the sharper pangs of life they let us forget the whole of these upon our sacred day of memories the day of memories, February 1, the honored dust in every hollowed spot. In the honored names of all our heroes dead, the glorious land for which, we, for which they fought and fled, our nation's hopes, the kindly common good, the universal bond of brotherhood. These remember gladly all of these upon our sacred day of memories. I want to thank Comrade Kriefkin, sorry, Comrade Krieger, Siefkin, um, as well as Cadet Mikuluch. Looking at Gabe, make sure I got that. Okay, good. Um, next, I'd like to call upon our uh, treasurer, uh, Margaret Krieger, who will do the roll call of remembrance. As we remember together, let us pause to think reverently of those of our comrades who by sea, by land, and in the air laid down their lives for their sovereign and country. Their sacrifice will ever inspire us to labor on to the end that those who survive and need our aid may be assured of assistance and that the country in which we live and for which they died may ever be worthy of the sacrifice they made. During the silence, we will remember our fallen comrades, and in particular, those who have passed on since we last gathered together. Let us not forget Fern Gilman Gordon. They shall grow not old, 
as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, for those who are not associated with the branch, just to let you know, Gill was one of our last surviving World War II veterans that we had in the branch. Uh, Joan Parra is our remaining World War II veteran uh, that we have left with us. So next, I'd like to call upon uh, Vice President Dennis Evanson again um, for the Vietnam veteran lapel pin presentation. Uh, Dennis himself has already received one of these from one of the other many veterans organizations that uh, Dennis is involved in. Yeah, too many. <clears throat> All right, before I do it, of course. I want to reflect a moment. What is the significance of the Vietnam veterans of a fell pen? It was presented on behalf of a grateful nation to living United States veterans who served on active duty in the United States Armed Forces at any time during the period of 1 November 1955 through 15 November 1975, regardless of the location of their service. Each veteran is eligible to receive one pin. Now the symbol, the eagle, the eagle represents courage, honor, and a dedicated service to our nation as one of the most recognizable and notable American symbols. It is emblazed with a distinction and numerous military insignia. The blue circle, circle, the blue circle matches the canton of the American flag and signifies vigilance, perseverance, and justice. The circle shapes with blue color also match the official seal of the, of the commemoration. The laurel wreath, a time-honored symbol representing victory, integrity, and strength. The stripes, Stripes behind the eagle represent the American flag. Stars, the six stars represent the six allies who served, sacrificed, and fought alongside one another. Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, the Republic of Korea, Thailand, and the United States. A grateful nation thanks and honors you. At this point, I'll pause. And I'll ask our member, Krieger, come forward. Thank you. Run away. One last one. The Grateful Nation thanks and honors you. This is embossed on the back, closest to the heart of the wearer. Also, the official name of the commemoration is included to remind each measure that this is a national initiative and this is the help and this nation's lasting memo, momentum of things. Again, thank you. Last one. Just so everyone is aware, uh, on the table in the back, there's some information about both the pins and the program. I'd encourage you to take one as you leave. Uh, that way you have uh, 
information about it because from what they estimate, as many as 20% of the veterans that are eligible for these pins have not received them to date. Um, so please take them. And if you know of somebody that hasn't, uh, feel free to let us, any branch or post of the VFW or the American Legion know, and they would be happy to help out. Um, so I will call upon our Piper, Lynn Miller, again for his rendition of Amazing Grace. Thank you, Lynn. Next, I'd like to call upon Cadet uh, McCulloch again uh, to uh, place the wreath. As a branch of the Royal Canadian Legion, Memorial Day is a bit of an odd commemoration for us. In Canada, like most nations at the time, November 11th was designated as Armistice Day, later changed for Remembrance Day. And that was the day in which we commemorated both those who fought and those who died during World War I. However, in the United States, there already existed a day to commemorate the more than 600,000 soldiers from both sides of the Civil War, who gave what Lincoln referred to in his Gettysburg Address as the last full measure of devotion. As Branch 25 is a U.S.-based branch, as well as a branch that has historically had a significant portion of its membership as American citizens. Even today, 20, so, sorry, even today, 12 of our 24 ordinary members or veterans served in one of the branches of the U.S. Armed Services. So it has always been important for us to ensure that we include Memorial Day service in our schedule. Interestingly, Memorial Day was originally called Decoration Day. And according to historian Stuart McConnell, the actual commemoration focused on assembling in local cemeteries to decorate the graves of the fallen, followed by a simple and subdued graveyard service involving prayers, short patriotic speeches and music, and perhaps at the end a rifle salute. 
Well, we are short a rifle salute, largely in part because I only learned that tradition about a week ago and didn't have a chance to get the cadets prepared for it. Although maybe that's something we can add next year. And I want to thank instructor Gibson, who's also a member of our branch for the crosses across the graves as we've decorated those. Hopefully we've lived up to that original version of what today represents. To quote from his 2017 Memorial Day address at the Punchbowl Military Cemetery of the Pacific in Honolulu, Hawaii, Admiral Harry Harris, who at the time was commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, indicated that President Reagan once said, most of those who died in defense of our country were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. They gave up their chance to be husbands, fathers, and grandfathers. They gave up everything for their country, for us. All we can do is remember. But men hold no monopoly on patriotism, on gallantry, on service to their country. We also remember and honor the women who served a greater cause than themselves, and in too many instances gave of themselves as well. I'm deeply inspired by their stories of heroism and sacrifice. I was reminded of these words from Admiral Harris this week as we planned out this service, and in particular, the Vietnam veterans lapel pin. As Comrade Edmondson described, these pins are presented to any living veteran who served on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces at any time during the Vietnam conflict, regardless of location. The Vietnam War Commemorative Organization specifically states that they make no distinction between veterans who served in country, in theater, or were stationed elsewhere during the Vietnam War period. All were called to serve, none could self-determine where they were stationed, and all were seen in much the same way by a country that could not separate the war from the warrior as we do today. Within our branch, we actually have six veterans that meet this criteria. Here with us today, as I mentioned, Dennis Edmondson, uh, who presented the pin to Siefkin Krieger, uh, both U.S. Air Force. We are also unable to join us today, James Baldwin from the U.S. Navy, James Essex, another U.S. Air Force veteran, Donald Copacell, U.S. Marine Corps, and Wayne Pageant, U.S. Coast Guard. In fact, I think all we're missing is the Army, and we would have most of the branches of the service there. Um, over the coming months, we will be looking for opportunities to present pins to these four remaining individuals, and I'd welcome any members of the branch, our cadet corps, and the general public to join us at these opportunities, and we'll be posting these on our website. Going back to Admiral Harris's words once again, in their materials and in their services, the Reese Across America organization frequently says that a person dies twice, once when they take their final breath and later the last time their name is spoken. While most of the Canadian, British, and American servicemen and women buried in this place today did not pay the supreme sacrifice during a time of conflict, their mere act of signing up suggests that they, they were willing to do so if necessary. As you walk about the grounds following the service, please take some time to look at the markers and not just read the names to yourself, but read them aloud. I'll have the two anthems coming up next. Just have to get them started here. The Canadian followed by the British.
I now call upon Dennis Edmondson once again to deliver our closing prayer and the response is printed in the program. Oh God, we remember before you those who lay down their lives for freedom and truth. We commend their souls into your gracious keeping and pray that we may be worthy of their sacrifice. Help us to be faithful and true to those ideals which they had fought and died. May we continue to, per to perpetuate the memory of our departed comrades and by our service to country, community, and comrades. And remembering our solemn obligation, may we ever pray, Lord God of hosts, be with us yet. Lest we forget. Lest, lest we forget. Thank you, Dennis. And... Uh, this brings us almost to a close of our service. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, in particular, I'd particularly like to thank our cadets once again. Um, if it wasn't for them, most of these services that we have would not be possible. Uh, as you can see, they provide much of the uh, legwork for us uh, during the services and so much in between. Uh, that's a testament both to them as well as their leaders and instructors who are with us today. And uh, we truly appreciate the work that they've done. Um, I apologize a little bit about the technical difficulties. It seems it wouldn't be a service for us these days without a couple of them. Um, last year, we didn't have a speaker that could be heard more than 10 feet away from the speaker. Uh, this year, it's uh, we couldn't get it to connect to the computer, so we had to run everything, for, at least from a sound perspective, off the phone. Uh, so we appreciate your uh, tolerance with that. And uh, with that, I'll uh, ask the cadets to... Uh, Retire the colors, and then that'll be followed by uh, Lynn Miller once again uh, to close us out. Thank mm -hmm. you.